If you've ever been to a cubing competition, or at least seen footage of one, you'll know the familiar sight of the stack mat timer. Recently, they released a new 5th generation version, which includes some good and some not so good changes. Today, we're going to be taking a look at what has changed from the old Gen 4 timer, the controversies surrounding these new features, and of course, whether you should care enough to buy a new $33 timer. So here is the new timer and the new mat. Unfortunately, it's not compatible with the old Gen 3 and 4 mats, for reasons that I'll explain soon, but if you want one, it comes in a really good bundle deal. $40 for the timer, mat, and a carrying bag. Link in the description. On the outside, it's stylized very similar to the old Gen 4 timer, although it's now a little bit bigger and the shape has changed somewhat. We still have the basic power and reset button, which are supposed to be a little bit stronger than on the old ones, which wore out very quickly. And of course, there's the classic two pads for your hands. I'll get into why these extra pads are here in a minute. It works just like any other stack mat. Press the power button to turn the screen on, hold down the two pads for about a second, then let go to start the timer. Once you finish your solve, you put your hands back down, look at the time, and then hit the reset button. Except, what you just saw there is actually one of the biggest new features of this timer. It may look like the button's just not working, but in fact, all you have to do is just hold it down for an extra split second, and then it resets your time just fine. Why is this such a big deal? Well, one of the biggest issues with stack mat timers at cubing competitions has always been accidental resets. As you're finishing your solve, if you hit the timer too hard, or maybe with your finger over the button, it's possible that you could accidentally reset your time and get a DNF. So it may not seem like a lot, but that extra split second of time makes it nearly impossible to tap the button on accident, while still being very easy to press when you want to reset. The same is also true of the power button. For competition organizers, this is one of the best new features of the Gen 5 timer. Now let's move on to the most intriguing change when you first look at this new timer, the extra two thumb pads. Every version of the stack mat thus far could be activated by simply holding your fingers on the two pads like this. The problem is that it's still possible to trigger with your hands in a different position, which could give you a huge unfair advantage if you, say, start your solve like this. Fortunately, the WCA regulations take care of this. You can't be touching your cube before or after your solve, plus you must start the timer using your fingers, palm facing down. However, if you look at the sport of cup stacking, where the stack mat timer originated, they don't have as strict of regulations, so fast stackers often do start their timers like this. And so, in an extremely controversial move in the sports stacking community, they released the Gen 5 timer. The idea is that you have to hold not only your fingers on the main two pads, but also your thumbs on these extra two pads to ensure a consistent starting and stopping position. And the worst part is, they effectively reset all previous records to keep things fair. But what impact will this have on cubing competitions? Well, probably none at all. You can actually switch back and forth between 2-pad and 4-pad mode by holding down the reset button for 5 seconds. Like that. The WCA hasn't officially approved the use of these timers yet, but in all likelihood, we will continue to only use the 2-pad mode for speed cubing, so no thumbs required. The last major change on the front of the timer is the removal of these two buttons, which basically could be used to save a few of your best times. To be totally honest, I never use this feature anyway, so I imagine most people won't miss it too badly. If anything, it just makes the timer look cleaner and be easier to use. Also, the red and green LEDs of the Gen 4 timer, which light up sequentially like this, have been replaced with a single LED that changes from red to green. When the timer isn't running, it lights up yellow in 2-pad mode and blue in 4-pad mode, which makes it easier to ensure you're on the right one. Another good change is that they've moved this port, which is used to plug into the big tournament displays at competitions. It's now down in this little indent on the bottom with this little path to hold the cable in place, which makes it basically impossible to accidentally unplug it, which definitely used to be an issue. Also on the back of the timer, we have a simple instruction on how to switch between the modes, a battery compartment with two AAA batteries included, as well as these two little holes to attach the timer to the mat. You may notice that these holes look quite a lot different than they did on the Gen 3 and 4 timers, and indeed they have completely changed the attachment mechanism. With the older timers and mats, you would just set the timer on these two little nubs and then slide it into place. Apparently they decided to change the system due to timers being knocked off the mat. With the new system, you now have these little plastic clips, so you just set the timer on there and push down. I think this is a decent solution to a problem that would occasionally happen at cubing competitions. It is a lot more difficult to intentionally remove the timer, but the biggest downside in my opinion is that the old mats are no longer compatible. Even though the attachment points are almost exactly the same, the new timer is just a little bit shorter, otherwise they could have made it compatible with the old mats. I guess the other thing is that they want the new shape of the timer to match with the shape of the edge of the mat, but functionally they could have made it work with the old ones just fine. And this leads back to one of the final things that has annoyed people the most. Do we really need a new timer? 
Yeah, sports stackers are rightfully mad, since this changes the way their competitions have worked for decades. But cubers? We're just stuck wondering why we need to buy new $33 timers that, in our case, function almost exactly the same as the old ones. Some people have labeled this as just a money grab from speed stacks, especially with the mandatory change for sports stackers and unnecessary incompatibility with the old mats. The new reset button is great, but it would have been nice to see some bigger cubing specific improvements like being able to count over 10 minutes. Instead, us cubers are stuck with a very similar product with extra features we're never gonna use. More than likely, competition organizers will stick with the old Gen 4 timers for as long as they can. Don't get me wrong, I would still buy the Gen 5 timer as my first choice now, but I really see no compelling reason to upgrade if you already have one of these. So if you're just getting into cubing or don't yet have a stack mat, now would be a great time to get your first one. These new Gen 5 timers will probably be around for a while, so there's no reason not to invest in one now. Again, you can get the timer alone for the decent price of $33, or what I'd recommend is the timer, mat, and a carrying bag for just $40. You can get it for 5% off at thecubicle.com with discount code Z3Cubing, link in the description. So, what do you guys think about the new stack mat Gen 5 timer? Will you be buying one or just sticking with the one you already have? Let me know down in the comments, and also let me know how you like this slightly more scripted style of video. Anyway, that's pretty much it, and I'll see you guys next time.